Greetings, everyone, and step with me into the dark, sterile halls of a haunted hospital. Or, I guess, just my living room, which is very much not sterile, nor does it have halls. But we can use our imaginations here, as I create two anatomical tomes. The specs of the books I'm bringing to you today are as such. Two Coptic-bound tomes with red avocado-stained paper, and wooden panel covers upon which I'll be creating four separate wood burnings, depicting anatomical diagrams and accurate terminology. I will use a French link stitch for the very first time between the Coptic stitching. The inside, quote, cover pages will be collages of anatomical graphics. In great spirits, starting off this video, I lost some footage of the wood panels I chose and the process I underwent of creating the templates based upon their shapes, so I have a dramatic recreation for you. The shapes I chose as covers were basswood panels with irregular yet pleasingly curvaceous shapes. I wished for the paper of both books to match the shape of each basswood's profile, and as such, I traced and resized a workable template for each page that would be traced at the edge of a fold line to assure functional signatures. I don't own anything like a nice paper cutter, and with one of these shapes being organic rather than straight geometric lines, I committed to cutting out all 120 sheets between both books by hand with simple scissors. As you perhaps can or can't imagine, this took a very long time. That sentence coincidentally becomes a theme throughout these projects. Ahem. Despite my estimations, this took a very long time. But I consider the results well worth it and unique. For the paper, I wanted to achieve a deep and lustrous red which I've found achievable with naturally sourced avocado dye, if the natural source is my scraps from dinner, since to make avocado dye, you only need the skins and pits. After eating the decadent green areas, all that remains went into a saucepan on high heat until boiling. I then added baking soda to richen the color and set the heat to medium-low to maintain a consistent boil for an hour, stirring occasionally. After straining the dye twice, I added my paper. From there, the process becomes similar to my typical tea staining sessions. Soak in a dye bath, place on a pan, bake for a few minutes at 185 degrees Fahrenheit, pull it out before it's too late, bada bing bada boom. I deeply yearned for my pages to appear bloodied. Not necessarily in a gruesome way, but more of a medically aesthetic one. I experimented with a few different splatters, redrips, minimum, maximum, soakage, and the length of time spent baking in the oven. They had already been folded once during the cutting process, and now I needed to fold them once again along those same guidelines to assemble the signatures. I had to be quite alert about their orientations. My original hand-drawn pattern was a bit skee-wampus from side to side, as to say, it wasn't 100% symmetrical. This wasn't noticeable unless I misaligned them, and then had one page in a signature flipped or inverted. I meticulously assured that each page had the correct orientation and fold direction for things to fit together amicably. I shall restate my earlier sentiment. This took a very long time. I lost a little more footage around here, forgive me. I shall create another dramatic recreation for what you missed with a humble piece of scrap wood. After thoroughly sanding each basswood panel with a variety of grits for maximum smoothness and zero chance of splinters during work sessions, I sketched out the silhouettes that would be my wood-burning designs. For each of the two books, I chose a biological system associated with visually appealing organs as a theme. I decided to base the larger of the two tomes off of the heart and circulatory system. For the smaller of the two, 
the brain, along with the limbic and nervous systems. For practice, I began with the backside of my larger book. It was the more difficult of all the four diagrams in terms of anatomical complexity, but most simple in terms of shading, which I wished to be prepared for when doing the front covers. I chose to depict the main zones of the circulatory system with somewhat minimalistic detail as the wood burner I'm working with was like 18 bucks and not built for tiny precise details. The circulatory system is designed to deliver oxygen and other nutrients to our cells and organs through our blood and consists of our veins, arteries, the blood that circulates through them, and the heart at the center of it all. As such, I framed the heart in the middle of this complex system surrounded by branching paths, all carrying blood to the surrounding organs, the lungs, stomach, liver, spleen, kidneys, and digestive system. Between them, I depicted the major roadways that blood takes to get to and fro, and also included some major veins and arteries, leading to places across our shoulders, down and around our arms, legs, and up through our heads. When setting out with these designs in mind, I always knew I wanted to include pseudo-authentic labels to each major component, akin to the old medical diagrams. This practice actually rekindled old knowledge from high school, as well as taught me the pattern of Roman numerals, which for some reason has made as much sense as my left and my rights up to this point. For reference, I still have to make and hold up both the L's with my hands. And onto the front cover, which was considerably more important to me, a real anatomically accurate pump and bloody old heart. This process, shock of all shocks, took a very long time. As I mentioned, my wood burner is cheap as it is. Even at its highest setting, it still doesn't burn the deepest of indentations, and often can only make it through a few strokes before cooling down enough to make only shallow and semi-transparent lines. Luckily for me, I actually enjoyed that effect for the purposes of my aesthetic and shading style for these diagrams, but if I want cleaner lines in the future, I'm gonna have to start dropping coins in the new and improved wood burner fund jar. Every five minutes or so, I'd need to set it aside to give the poor little thing a breather so it could heat back up enough just to burn a little bit more. But I digress. I'm here to discuss the anatomy of a heart, not the psychology of my patients. The human heart is the main organ of the cardiovascular system, pumping blood throughout our entire bodies from where it sits safely inside our ribcage. The heart contains four main internal chambers and many external components meant for sending and receiving blood. In my diagram, I depicted the external view of the heart, so rather than displaying the atriums and ventricles, instead I showed things such as the aorta, pulmonary artery, superior and inferior vena cavus, pulmonary valves, and coronary and other various arteries. As you'll see upon my continuing, I gave each cover the same border design. I found that these basswood panels had thick and strong striations that caused the wood burner to skip and jolt over certain natural areas of the wood grain, and as such, straight lines were very difficult to achieve. It was sending me into a crisis, since typically I'm very skilled at drawing straight lines, thank you very much, but I came to realize the natural curves of the wood were what stood in the way, not my own incompetence. I think. With my line weight techniques, I can usually deepen the thickness of a line when a small jitter would occur, but for straight lines around the edges, I had to take a very different technique, such as tiny little wispy strokes to form a thicker line around the edge. Overall, I liked the look a lot more than a plain line, but as you can imagine, and I will repeat myself again, this took a very long time. I also made the decision to represent all labels on the front covers of both books in Latin, such as the original diagrams I drew inspiration from. The back covers remained in English terms, so that some things were still decipherable to those of us who don't know much in the way of Latin interpretation, like myself. I had some fairly extensive research into ensuring these terms and labels were accurate. I scrounged together some reference materials with Latin labeling, but other cross-referencing and deeper translation was needed, since I didn't entirely trust just Google Translate. With the help of my friend, who has studied a nerdy amount of Latin, 
I nervously and permanently burnt the terminology into the surface of the wood. Externus prospectus, an external perspective of the heart. Tabula cordis, a diagram or table of the heart organ. For my second and smaller book, I will be depicting the brain and a few of the systems it affects, the limbic and nervous systems. For these covers, I began with the borders as I found them tedious, and I work best by forcing myself to do the more menial tasks and save the fun ones, you know. Fun tasks, like drawing brains and spinal cords. These panels are smaller than the other book, and as such, with my designs, I won't have much room for the smaller individual labeling. For the front cover, I depicted bottom and side views of the brain's exterior, the human brain is by far the most complicated organ in the human body, and one of the most complex creations of nature. It controls all cognizance, perception, understanding, memory, thoughts, sensory translation, emotion, and every process that regulates our body. Through an incredibly vast yet microscopic web of our brain's neural network, we have developed perception enough of our own existence and all matters of existentialism. And we can also enjoy Krispy Kreme's limited edition Lorna Dune donuts, but only for a limited time and while supplies last. Not sponsored, obviously, I just really like them. Unlike the heart, the brain is not made of muscle, but instead fat, water, protein, carbohydrates, and salts. Suspiciously, a lot like what I tend to eat. But I guess some people do eat brains now, don't they? Cerebrum, being a Latin term for both brain and mind, is also coined the term for one segment of the brain, the front and the largest area, comprising of external gray matter, the cerebral cortex, and internal white matter. The cerebellum, or little brain, is the smaller segment at the back, and the brain stem connects the rest of the brain with the spinal cord. Tabula cerebrum a diagram or table of the brain organ. I don't know how obvious it is, but I'm not used to wood burning. In the past, I've only done a couple of small practice thingies on the cheapest of basswood shapes, but I'm versed in traditional pen inking and was able to mimic some of the skills I've developed with my inking style and convert those principles to wood burning. The backside of this book will be the simplest of the four. Akin to the style of my circulatory system diagram, I will depict main areas of the limbic and nervous systems from a broader perspective, with simpler shading and emphasis on the system structures themselves. Beginning with the brain at a side view, I will depict the nerves, similar in visual to veins but different in function, as they emerge from the brain stem and branch out from the spinal cord. On the left-hand side, and yes, I had to hold up my L's while writing the script to figure that out, by the way, I'm depicting the spinal cord itself.
And now, after 17 hours of wood-burning footage that have been condensed down to about 10 minutes of content, my covers are fully burned. I intend to stain them with a light wood stain to enhance the natural patterning of the wood. In preparation, I must re-sand the surface lightly with a couple grits to remove pencil lines and other surface level scratching, sanding only in the direction of the grain. Afterwards, to assure they're fully prepared and at my mercy, I wipe them first with a dry towel, then a sopping wet one, and then finally with another dry towel. They then sit and air dry until I find it satisfactory, as dry as you'd find a sun-bleached bone. Using driftwood colored wood stain, I dip a small scrap of my sacrificial throwaway towel into the mixture and gently spread the stain across the surface. I use circular and repetitive motions to assure an even coating. A few spots that have been gouged slightly deeper than my sanding caused subtle darker splotches in places, but I ended up enjoying this look. I thought it appeared a bit more distressed and antique. The staining became a speed run when I noticed a sudden summer storm rolling in out of nowhere, but I was bound and determined to stain them all, and stain them all well, since they take a full day to cure and I'm impatient. After staining each, I took a dry scrap of towel to their surfaces to wipe off any remaining stain that might have pooled. After an excruciating 24 hours of doing nothing on this project, I could finally begin the assembly of the inside covers. I bought a weird random book of anatomical ephemera that I could use for the purposes of collage. I began by cutting base shapes for each cover to match the curvature, but opting to give the edge about a quarter inch of breathing room, still displaying some of the natural wood. I don't have a foam brush, which seems like a staple of most crafters, but here we are, using a random hand sponge to spread PVA glue across the backsides of the collage paper. The pages weren't quite big enough to fit on the bigger panels, so I compromised by cutting out a top and a bottom segment for each side. I glued down the base segment in entirety and then the overlayer segment only at the top to allow me some room to tear along its edges. The smaller book was far more convenient and only required me to cut one segment per basswood panel. Of all the random pages and ephemera options in the book, I attempted to pick diagrams that were pertinent to each theme. For the heart tome, I selected imagery such as chestal cavities, muscle structures, heart graphics, rib cages, that kind of thing. For the brain tome, I chose imagery around the spine and spinal cord, the brain, stuff in that realm. Of the edges I tore, I used red and black ink pads to distress the exposed white along the torn edge. While the ink dried, I moved on to cutting out smaller ephemera specimens for the brain book. Some I cut cleanly, some I tore, some I split apart and displayed in different areas. Through the whole process, of course, I used the same trusty hand sponge.
When the ink had dried, I pulled back the unsecured overlayer segment and applied glue to the areas that hadn't yet been sweetly touched with the PVA. The ephemera elements for the heart book were done similarly to the brain book, and then tastefully applied to where I believed appealing. I've heard somewhere before that PVA glue is basically better in over-glorified Mod Podge, so without doing a smidgen of research, I just dove in and covered them up with the stuff to hold things in place. Luckily for me, even though I was an idiot, it didn't backfire, and it worked out just fine. With our covers drying and almost completely done, we must now prep the text blocks. I marked the holes in the correct fashion for the style of binding I have chosen, Coptic binding with a French link stitch. I'm punching all signatures individually by hand with an awl. As with a lot of the rest of the process, I have 32 total signatures between the two books, and therefore, this took a very long time. I am aware that there are tools that make this process faster and infinitely easier and even more accurate. But look here, mister, I'm a bookbinder on a budget, and you'd better believe I'm gonna pinch my pennies and keep it up like this for the time being. The book is almost ready for final assembly. There's just one more step for the covers. They must have binding holes drilled into them. I mark those holes along the border to camouflage them. And finally, we may bind. I unravel the length of all my signatures, and then some, from my brown waxed thread. I thread a straight needle rather than my typical curved one, as only a straight needle will get through the thick basswood covers. Bear with me for the brain book. I opted to do the smaller one first as a test, and it only has one Frank, and it only has one French link section versus the heart book, which has two. Attaching the cover was far more difficult with a thick slab of wood instead of my other pleasant leather covers that I've used in the past. I found myself constantly switching between straight and curved needles just to get that limbic system diagram to attach to my humble blood-colored paper. I didn't think it was too much to ask, but oh, I didn't know what was in store with attaching the front cover, which comes later. The French link stitch consists of straight stitching across two binding holes and returning them on the next signature and wrapping behind the previous straight stitch. The results yield a pretty X to diamond pattern that takes form more and more as progress is made. I got very minimal footage of the front cover. Honestly, you're lucky you got any at all. Good thing you can't hear the audio, as it was just minutes of my pure bafflement and frustration and scorning the action of rethreading needles with small eyes. So a demon ascended to possess my body to force me to finish attaching the cover because I don't recall doing so and neither will you since here I am, tying it off in completion. And here we go, second time is a charm. Rewatching this footage for writing the script makes me in the present berate my past self as, spoiler, this wasn't enough thread, despite the fact that I was certain
but luckily for us, I've got some solid spicy time-lapse footage of almost all this one's entire process. Can you guess which part I might have needed to stop recording? <laughs> and that pesky, troublesome little demon must have returned, because somehow the front cover's attached and I'm tying it all off. A drop of Loctite for my peace of mind. And after they've pressed for some time in my professional-looking book press, they're ready to come out and into the world. I think they've turned out beautifully, especially for consisting of so many things I've never attempted before. I hope you enjoy the final reveal, but first, some cinematography.
Thank you all for joining me today for my exciting anatomical creation. I hope you enjoyed how they turned out, and I hope you enjoyed my stupid blood bit in my new woodburn sona. Let me know which one you preferred, the heart tome or the brain book. These books will be available on my Etsy shop. Link to each will be down in the description. I have much more in store for us in the future. Grimoires and tomes, dolls, and perhaps soon, even something new. And as I finish up this script while the classical noir playlist I'm listening to makes me feel like a spy who is about to be exposed, I bid you a good morning, evening, afternoon, night, or other undisclosed time that I might not be aware exists. Good day.